What is happening, y'all? Welcome, I'm back. It's time to knock out the submission, a favor for the blacksmith. So even though this one doesn't have anything uh, important on it, it is important to do this mission because all of the blacksmith-oriented missions are going to expand the blacksmith's capabilities, give them uh, more armor, more weapons, just, you know, it's good to do. The blacksmith wants something, you do it for the blacksmith. So we're gonna go right just to kill a dweller real fast. Actually, I should put on my put on my ninja bombs. Ah, it doesn't matter. Not that many slimes here. Put them on later. So up the ladder, and we'll have a slime waiting for us. Here, look at them. You probably thought, oh, this is a hot spring. Nope. It's just a sneaky slime waiting for a chance to try and touch you. Oh, we'll do levitation. Those, those are useful. We can use those to walk through levels that are on fire and all that. So, pick some of those up. Um, so we're gonna leave to the right. Tokichiro. Talk to her. She's gonna come along and join us. See, that's why you got to be careful using that ability. I could have died. You can see how that ability there just bopped him in the face, did a bunch of key damage. There's quite a few of these missions where you can have the NPC along. The NPCs aren't too bad. I'd recommend them over the uh, the blue summons. Blue summons are dookie. Nothing down there. Uh, now there's a Yoki, but there's also a Dweller. So we're going to take out the Dweller first. That. right there. Also really good at popping bombs off. It's the solid axe ability. And anytime you look for abilities, you always want to make sure you have at least something that's going to be effective for destroying the horn on enemies. Uh, so we got an Ipondatara in the darkness. Let's pop a Keikai barrier. loot. Actually, space these notes out slightly. Like, double space everything. So, we're gonna drop down and get more loot. Now, we're not gonna go through there just yet. Right outside of here is going to be a flame wheel, but we're gonna be coming up behind it. And there is a yokai on the other side of these boxes, so don't just run right through them. battle focus um instead i like tri spark but we can't get access to that i could run lumber chop for now but it's somewhat gimmicky uh we're going to do rumbling no we'll no we'll do titanic strength that's a fun ability that'll eventually get replaced by bear's bane but we need to grab this anyway to make our way up to relentless just watch the fire That's the thing with axe. While the, the basic attacks of the axe, there's not too much there. Uh, the skills of the axe are actually really good. Oh my god, these things hurt so much. So the trick to these is you want to get behind them. You can see how the face kind of has... Uh, the Mumio here, this might not be too bad. Yep, see how she hit it in the back and it instantly flipped it down? If you can hit where the crystal is on the back, you can mess those things on up. 
So with him down, uh, there's two different archers above that we are gonna, actually we'll just go and we'll take them out the old fashioned way. I forgot to mention it, but you should have should have totally put on uh, Yatsu no Kami after that last mission. Yatsu is a incredibly potent soul core. <clears throat> Second was there. Don't think there's any loot back here. Yeah. yeah, Yatsu will get you through a huge chunk of the game. In fact, I'd suggest using him all the way up until you have a, a Twilight version of that mission where you can get a higher level one. Get rid of them. That's part of the reason why we came from behind. If you came from the front, you would have had to deal with both those guys trying to shoot you. Um, oh, there's that one too. So if you get on fire, you can roll to put it out. Since we're not fully on fire, it didn't count. See, now him, he was on fire. All right, um, take a left at the bridge. So cross bridge, and we're gonna wait for a wheel monk. There's a wheel monk right there. Wanted to come on over. Is that a little too early? Oh God, oh God. Ooh. You can see just how deadly getting stuck in that fire is, even for half a second. And that was enough to almost kill me right there. Fire bad, basically. Alright, uh, so we're gonna go forward, and there's two different archers that we can snipe. This clown. And this guy. Now, he might be too far for a headshot, but we'll try. Nope. Got a Gaki in the house. Kill him. Uh, so we're gonna go, let's see, go around to the left near fire to kill a dweller. Um, this will lead us down towards the boss for this zone, but we're not gonna do that just yet. another Gaki. So similar to before, anytime there is a pair of Gakis, take them out. And here is our other Wheel Monk. Alright, Gaki in the building. Go around the left, cross over for two Gakis, kill Wheel Monk, and then we have a Epondatara that is in a cloud. Guarding a chest. Not in there, but in here. Now we're going to save our talisman because there's going to be another one uh, coming up in a moment. Okay, 
I gotta say, this is my first time going through the game with a corruption axe. This thing is doing really, really well. Like, just tearing enemies apart. Uh, let's take a look at that. Anything good? How are you coming along? Nowhere close to familiarity. 315 banded axe. I definitely gotta level my axe up. Um, so, with them dead, we are gonna go up the stairs here, I believe. Go back up the ladder... Um, we're gonna get this loot. Oh, no. Then we're gonna take this path around. It's one of the archers that we killed. Sorry, I forgot there's that Gaki that's waiting right there. Get off my waifu. Okay, and this is where the path would have gone otherwise. As you can see it just loops around. We'll grab that loot from the archer we sniped earlier real fast. And then that lets you drop down if you've summoned the Ipondatara and then ran away because you were scared for your life. Alright, so into here we go. Hey, a writing set. Really nice for ninjas. Now, right there, that cloud is going to pop a bossy Pondatara. Uh, so we want to clear away as much as we can down here. Before it has a chance to come out. Get rid of them. Let's see, uh, two soldiers, one dweller, go down ladder, three dwellers, two gakis, and Dark Realm Ipombatar. Uh, while we have a Mumio, we might as well kill this thing, get some loot if it's useful. Yep. Nice little tip here, anytime you have along the, uh, the NPCs. This makes your farming that much easier. Not that we really needed help, but, you know. It was there. No, no, wrong skill. Wrong skill. There we go. And there's the Magatama. So don't forget to pick up this piece of loot that's right here. And that one's wrapped up. So, we have two more side missions that we're going to speed through. Got a bunch of loot for that. Ooh, level 25. Yep, you're totally combining with my thing. Uh, so, if we go to the blacksmith now, have some dialogue here. Pop that up. And then, uh, Order Forge, hand it over. The Magitama has improved the blacksmithing's forging capabilities. So, some new stuff. Um, but we are going to soul match our baby. Gonna bring you on up. Oh yes, level 25. And neither of these have an inheritable. Let's see, do you have an inheritable? You don't either. If you have an inheritable on a soul core, you can match that on over to uh, to uh, corruption-based weapons. 
And I'm not 100%, but I want to say this only works with weapons that are innate corruption. Because while this is a corruption weapon, it's also like a yokai weapon. As I believe that those who sin during their lifetimes will suffer eternally in hell. This weapon is wielded by the Oni who serve him and torments the dead. A uh, switchblade made from the skull of a falling dragon god turned Aratama. You know, these are actual, like, when, when the sentence bar fills up, you'll actually hear the yokai talk. And that's why you confuse them with cores. I want to say if you somehow manage to roll corruption on your weapon with, uh, with just tempering, that you will not get that feature. That's just from what we've done. Um, and then the feral unlocked. Just get rid of these, uh... Just want to get rid of the, the exclamation points. Uh, tea house you won't have right now. This is showing up because <laughs> I have it in a, a later save. So we're just getting rid of that that mark. Um, when this unlocks, we'll discuss more about it though. And then in the hut, oh, can do uh, some visitation. There's actually some missions that will literally like all they'll do is they'll uh, like there's a side mission that allows you to to have a a Kappa visit your hut, but that's the only thing you get outside of it. So on our Guardian Spirits, we are 100% swapping on up. We're upgrading to our good friend Yatsu no Kami. We'll take you off. Yatsu no Kami, the reason this thing is so good is it can hit the enemy multiple times. In a short enough room, this thing will hit the enemy as many as five freaking times. It's absolutely crazy, and it's an incredibly potent soul core to use um as for our secondary we've sorted things by attunement to see what else we can fit uh i can either do efficient yokai abilities or poison resistance uh let's do anima bonus on timely guard that'll work for me uh the other guardian spirit if you're playing a this one's actually not too bad even for what i'm doing because it'll add uh poison onto the yokai abilities and poison accumulation um but with what I have right now, the only real advantage I'm getting out of this is life drain. If I had a poison weapon, that poison accumulation would 100% make this worthwhile. But where I am right now, I'm going to be better off working with Mikami because of the 15% damage boost and the final blow damage. Plus the melee attack key consumption helps out a lot with axe. Uh, now for these next two side missions, if you remember back towards the, the start of the game, I talked about how there's a couple side missions that don't really offer anything that i would consider required these two missions are perfect examples of that so we're just going to burn through this we're not going to be going and hitting all the loot we're just going to show you how to get through it and beat it uh, this mission in particular there's a bunch of sudamas so this is actually a great chance for you to try and get a kodama soul core uh, once you get to new game plus you can actually get a divine kodama bowl from this mission so that's actually before i do this let me check gear Check my gear again. Uh, yes, I like luck. I like that. I don't like that. I like you. And I don't like you. We are overweight. So let's dump it all into stamina and see what happens. Still overweight. That's fine. We're going to swap something out here to get below weight. What did I switch to? What's the... Um, oh, there's a chest. Um, whatever. We'll go to that. It's fine. So for this mission, if you look up at the top of the map, you'll see how there's a bunch of little shiny things. Uh, this essentially just indicates a bunch of Kodamas and Sudamas throughout the map. And the goal here is to just find all of them and guide them on back. So we're just going to basically sprint through, get the objective done here. Uh, very first one is going to be up top here. And the reason that for missions like this, we're not going, uh, you know, we're not going to be documenting every piece of loot and everywhere to go is because the nature of these missions, the stuff that's going to drop for you, it's going to be completely random. You know, you might get a purple weapon, you might get nothing but white. Uh, there's no ninja locks to give skill points. There are no unique things. And yeah, Kodama Soul Core, let's go. Only took a couple trades with him run on over this way uh similarly the the dark realm like the achievement for dark realm that only applies to main missions so whether or not you get the dark realm and submissions also does not matter let's grab this and see it's a yellow a yellow hammer you know, i got a yellow hammer you guys may get a, a purple katana oh god i fell inside the fence now we got to run around and 
Now let's just kill her. Kill her and chain and clear the realm. Look at Yatsu no Kami just going off. Love that thing. Should be a. Oh, no, I'm gonna have to go back up top. It's fine. We can go this way to get to it. Doing these missions, the only real reason to knock them out is to have a like complete all missions in the game achievement. So we're doing them, but like I said, it's. I mean, I'm sure somebody's gonna complain, but it's not worth pointing out every single piece of potentially random loot that you can get in a submission like this. This is here. If you want to go like super in depth into it, you can. But I'm gonna show you how to get these done since they don't offer anything that's considered uh, necessary loot. our third and after that we are off to the races oh we got you real fast um one thing i like to do is if there's nothing in particular i need i'll keep tossing them weapons and anytime i toss them a purple weapon they'll give me a purple weapon back so if you know you're running tonfas for example well for example let's say i had i wanted switch glaive i could have just you know, i tossed them that katana and now i just got a new purple switch glaive so it's a good way to just cycle loot that you, you don't want to potentially get new things. Alright, now we need to cross this bridge. I'll pop this open in the event that we somehow die. While that's opening. I'm going to spend some stuff. We are going to get... Uh, extend this duration even further. Um, so where we're at now in the samurai skills, the next things I would suggest getting are either your damage boost, if you can get access to it. In my case, I can because I'm running stamina. This is going to be really nice to pick up. Uh, but otherwise, these will give you a actual buff on top of this buff. So, excuse me, this buff. So when I do this, I get a special effect that's going to negate, negate. When I do this, I'm going to actually get a defensive buff. So picking up Purify Realms is going to be really nice. If you can get fast access to your thing, like if your Omeo Magic's right there, um, something like Strength, though, it's up here. Since we're doing stamina, that works out because I can now put, go to here, in skill customization, and I can put that on. And now, heaven and earth, the damage will be boosted based off my stamina, which is already going up high. So, just a nice little bonus there. Exactly what I'm talking about some crappy white loot. Should be one down here. Wait, no, not down here. Never mind. It's back up, up top in the dark realm. Uh, I'm just gonna skip this. And go into the dark realm, and I want to say we can run straight through and kill the Enki that is causing this thing. Not that Enki, but whatever. We'll kill him. If anything, the main reason that it's worth going through these missions, even if not to grab all the loot, is to just to get you access to more Embrita. You know, we're essentially just doing this to, to get more experience, making it easier to level up. So that one is guarding one of the final Kodamas. We're going to drop down and kill him, and we'll work our way over and get the other ones. So to do backstabs, you want to carefully walk up behind the target, and then hit your heavy attack button. Okay, I got you. Right, 
look how much damage that thing just did. This is why I love Yatsuno Kao. He's gonna purge the realm. Go out back and get this one. Grab this. Oh yeah, what am I doing? You're not a Kodama. Um, let's give him a spider lily. Every now and then if you give him something rare, it'll toss you a bunch of rare stuff, so. Ah, garbage. The very last one is right here on this bridge. Now this mission is going to end once you get the last of either the Kodamas or the Sudamas. You can see that grabbing him, all of these things have died. Uh, so if you want to go through and um, you know fight more stuff, don't grab that final Kodama yet. But otherwise, just kill it. You can still go around and pick up loot and stuff, as you can see. But yeah, like I said, these are these are quick side missions. We're essentially going in this one just to pick up like a smithing text and the fact that it was like a quick 10,000 Emrita. Um, Beyond that, actually, this one might unlock, uh, this one might be what gives you Sudamas at the hut as like a special, but once again, the missions that we are doing this with do not affect your platinum achievement whatsoever. Um, you don't need to grab every single thing in them. Oh no, we get possessed, we get a basic Kodama bowl, so that's, that's nice. And we got a couple soul cores that look pretty good, so. Ooh, attack inheritable Enki, very nice. So anyway, um, we're going to wrap things up here. This next mission, for those that want to jump into it, we might do this on a later episode when we have time. This is essentially just a gauntlet of enemies. You fight through a bunch of enemies, and then at the very end, there are one of those yokai hunter guys that use a switch glaive. He's actually pretty beefy, so I'd suggest doing it uh, either co-op or summoning a couple different things to come along with you, because it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so we'll probably knock that out the next time we have uh, some extra submissions that we can do just to, to show... How easy it is to go through that one uh, but there's no reason you have to do that now no no rare items on it and so instead in the next episode we're going to be moving along to act two for the time being so stay tuned up next will be the hidden monsters of okai hazama and i will see you guys then